<laughs> so that's what I'm doing here. Is I'm just touching her so she knows that she's going to survive. And then we'll get up to the point a little in a second here where where she can do she can make that decision a little more on her own. There we go. The other thing that I like to do is while I'm holding the treat in my hand, I watch their face and I don't open till both ears come forward. Because what I'm most interested in rewarding is a change in how the horse thinks, not an actual behavior. Because if they're thinking the right way, then everything's just going to fall into place. Because horses read body language way better than humans do. So she usually knows what I want, but just can't either do it physically or mentally or emotionally. confidence because Shirley acted like what I was doing to her was a real big deal and he was just like oh no if Shirley thinks this is a big deal and <laughs> then it must be a big deal so this kind of face right here is her thinking really hard where her ears have act like that she's kind of gone inside of her head she's going, is this really what I should be doing <laughs> but there you go the ears came forward again so that's an invitation to start working Now she's defensive because Shirley's behind her and Shirley's pretty bossy. There we go. Okay. So she I'm gonna grab the I can tell by the look on her face that she's ready for a little bit more of a challenge. And I think I can tell that. Look how she just went limp comparatively to how she was before. Like she's not all sucked up in her barrel in here, and now her eyes are softer. So what she's saying is, okay, I get it. We've done this before. So when you're going to put the halter on, you have to think about where the halter is touching them on the neck, and also the direction it's coming from. So for example, um, I need to know if my horse is going to want me to reach over their neck and then wiggle the halter up their nose. Maybe they want me to just put it on like that. Maybe they want me to reach under and then grab the strap and wiggle it up. And it totally depends on the horse. And the method that you're going to use today is whatever method that makes sense. Overall, you want to teach them all of them because you never know what way their owner is going to want to halter them. So, the first thing I want to do is I just want to be able to touch her on the neck. Because of how she's holding her head, I'm thinking, like, she's leaving this area open. Other horses, they might stick their nose forward, and that'd be an indication that they want to go like this. Um, some horses just stick their chin up, and that says reach over. You have to just kind of play with it and see. So the first thing I'm going to reward is just the first part of that, which is reaching over the neck. Connor, you need to be watching this.
maybe she should be upset too. there is I just waited for her to touch me. I wanted her to nuzzle my hand a little bit because she was getting to the point where she was just saying like, this is about haltering and I don't want to be haltered. But the horse who hasn't had bad experiences, that's not what they'll say. They'll not go, this is about haltering and I don't want to be haltered. They'll say like, you know, you're moving your hands around an awful lot. Like, you know, what are you doing with all your hands? And, that is an easier thing in a lot of ways to deal with than a horse like this because they already know all the places you might reach for and they're really careful to move their header to protect them. shoulder and I call that a ground because what seems to happen is they feel like there's so much energy coming off of me that it's just pushing them backwards but if you can get a hand on them that it seems to kind of bring you two closer together and then they can actually think again so I'm just gonna wait for her to nuzzle my hand and reward her for putting her nose on the edge like that so you can think of it as rewarding the try um, you could also think of it as rewarding her for being a more active participant. So it's really easy to think of the clicker training as rewarding a specific behavior, but that's not, that's only one use for it. And a lot of times you're better served by rewarding a change in attitude. So that's the tricky part. Is you, you, I'm looking for this behavior of putting her nose on my hand for the haltering, but that's not what I'm really clicking for. I'm watching her face and I'm going, okay, check, you've touched the halter, so now I'm waiting to be able to check my other box, which is touch the halter and do so with conscious competence. Like this was a, she made the choice and she's committed and that's what I click. she's making right now is a question. She's going, wow, this is really interesting. <laughs> but, so same thing again. I increased the difficulty just ever so slightly. My hand just reached this much further than it was last time, and it was almost the end of the world. Ha, 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 ha.